Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the Behringer Wing set up with the Behringer X32 with audio sharing between both of them. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now in this case, I'm going to have my Behringer Wing set up at front of house. And then I'm going to have my Behringer X32 set up in either monitors or broadcast. And the tutorial today will work in either setting if you plan on using the Behringer X32 in both spots. Now additionally, I'm going to have the DL32 plugged into my Behringer Wing as the main source of all of my inputs for this show. So we will end up sharing our AES50A port over to the Behringer X32 so that all of the channels that are coming into my wing can also go to my X32 that's either in broadcast or monitors. Now, there's a couple things that we need to do first before we can get all of this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my things into my Behringer wing first. So first thing is that the DL32 is going to plug into the A port on my Behringer wing. I'm next going to plug in my AES50C port into my A port on my Behringer X32. So C port out of the wing into the A port on the X32. On the DL32, we have the A port going to the A port of the Behringer wing. Once we've done that, there's a few more things that I need to do before we can actually get audio passing through to everything. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you press setup. I'm going to have you make sure your clock rate is at 48 kilohertz. Now you can do 44.1 if you want to, but I always set everything to 48 kilohertz because the latency is slightly less. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our sync source is on internal. If this is set to something else, you'll want to change it to internal so that we have the Behringer wing as our main source of clock. Once you've done that, we need to hop over to the Behringer X32 to change a few settings before we will see the C light start lighting up green. Currently, it's flashing red every now and then. So here's my screen on the Behringer X32. And as we can see, the A port light is flashing red every now and then. Now, what we need to do is we need to set the clock source of our X32 to be coming from the EES50A port so the wing will show up right here. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to press setup, and then on our second rotary knob, we're going to rotate down until we get to AES50A. Once we do that, it will then lock onto the wing as the primary source of our clock. The next thing that we do need to make sure of is that our sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz. Then we will see that the AES50A is coming from our Behringer wing, and this is ready to connect audio with. So I'm back over here with my Behringer wing and we can see that I have a status light of green on the A and a status light of green on the C port. So we are all ready to go and actually connect some audio here. So let's go ahead and start doing our routing. So for my routing, I have my channels and I'm wanting to pull these to be from my AES50A, which we can see that I have my DL32 here. And I'm just simply going to start routing. So there is all 32 channels coming from my DL32. Now, if I had some fancy routing, for instance, if I had some wireless receivers that were here at front of house where my Behringer wing is, I'm wanting those to show up on the Behringer X32. So let's say these uh, last 29 through 32 is coming from local in one through four. So we can see that I now have my local one, two, three, four. So those are gonna be my wireless receivers that are sitting here at front of house. Now, what we need to do is we need to copy our settings from this screen over to our outputs for our AES50C. And the reason for that is that I want to get all of my inputs sent to my X32. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our outputs and we are going to select AES50C. And so up here at the top, we can go and start routing our AES50A that's coming from our DL32. So I can go ahead and simply start routing these. Now remember, 29 through 32 was coming from our local in. 
So now what I have done is I have set up the Behringer Wing to be the primary console for mixing at front of house, and I have actually set up the Behringer X32 to be pulling from the Behringer Wing on AES50C, which we are sending all of the same inputs of the channels to AES50C to then show up on the Behringer X32. Now what's neat about this is this is set up to be pre all of the processing here on the Behringer Wing. The Behringer Wing is going to take primary control over the gain knobs. So if I go in and select one of my channels and I want to go and adjust the gain right here, I can. So I can simply turn up my and down my gain. Now my Behringer X32 is then going to have a trim adjustment from positive 18 to negative 18 off of my gain settings that I have here. But if you do end up clipping your preamp, uh, the DL32 here on your gain, then it's also going to be clipping for the Behringer X32 no matter where your trim level is set to. It's always going to chop off the top of that. So we want to be very careful with setting our gain settings here on the Behringer wing because we need to make sure that we remember that the Behringer X32 is sharing our gains. So be careful about where you set your gains to when mixing here in this case. Now there's a few other things that I can send over to the Behringer X32 for getting some of my talk back, for instance, over to the Behringer X32. So in this case, I have my talk back mic coming in on my local eight, and here is my aux eight, and if I go ahead and pick this up, check, 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 we can see that I have some signal here. And so what I want to do is I want to send this to my Behringer X32 so that my talk back from front of house will get to the band up on stage. So we can go to routing, we can go to AES50C, and on my 48, I am going to pull from my local eight. And so then we can see that if I pick up this microphone, we are sending signal down AES50C channel 48. Now, another thing that we can do is we can actually utilize some of the XLR outputs on the Behringer X32 to be from my Behringer wing if we wanted to. So for instance, if I was wanting to send some of my main outputs to 33 through 40, I can do that. So I can go ahead and click my outputs of my, say, mains, and I can go ahead and send, say, some of my band buses. So here's my band bus, here's my vocal bus, and we can send my pastor bus, and then on 39 and 40, I can go ahead and select my main PA as the output here. Now on my channel inputs, I am going to be pulling in two microphones from the Behringer X32. I'm gonna be pulling in a MD talkback mic, which is gonna be on XLR in 32 on the X32. And I have my talkback, my external talkback mic on the Behringer X32 that I'm wanting to pull into this console as well. So I'm actually gonna utilize my aux channels. So my aux six and seven. So aux six, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and select from AES 50 DC, and I'm going to pull this in from channel one and channel two. So we have our AES50C channel one is going to be from the MD talkback and channel two is going to be from the external talkback microphone. So I'm here at my X32 now and we need to do a little bit of routing. So the first thing that I'll need to do is hit the routing button and all of my inputs are going to be coming from AES50A one through 32. The next thing that I'm going to do is set my aux ins to be pulling from user in one and two. And this is because I'm wanting to get my talkback microphone from the Behringer wing to this console. So once we've done this, we need to go over to our AES50A and on our one through eight, we need to select user out one through eight. And this is so that we can get our talkback mic sent over to our Behringer wing. After that, we can page all the way over to our user routing. And in this case, I'm going to be pulling in my user input one. I'm going to pull from AES50A48. So we can see AES50A48. Now this is going to be my talkback microphone from the Behringer wing. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my output by pressing this first rotary knob, and then my user out one, I'm going to be pulling from my local in 32. 
because that's my MD talkback. And then on my output two, I'm going to go to talkback external. Now remember, on the Behringer wing, we had outputs 33 and through 40 set up to be some sends. So if I was wanting to do that, I can go and simply go to my XLR routing. And on my 9 through 16, I can go and select my AES 50A 33 through 36 and my AES 50A 37 through 40. Because what this is now doing is this is making it so that my XLR outputs on the back of this board are being pulled in from the AES 50A 33 through 40, which is coming from the Behringer wing. So as I'm talking here, if I go down to my aux ins, and we can see my aux in is coming from AES 50A48, and that is my voice as I'm talking here. So I'm back over here at my Behringer wing, and we can see that I have my two talkback channels coming from the Behringer X32. Additionally, we have my talkback microphone here at the Behringer wing that I can not only talk to either the monitor or the broadcast engineer at the X32, but I'd also be able to talk to the band if we routed that channel to the monitors. Now, if we wanted to add one more console into this mix and have three consoles on the same network, we have the Behringer wing at front of house, we have a Behringer X32 in monitors, and we have a Behringer X32 at broadcast. All we would have to do is plug in on our B port on the back of our wing to the other console and then just repeat the process that we did one more time. So we can go to routing, we can go to AAS 50A, we can select our sources to be from our AAS 50A again and basically route all of these outputs like we did for the first X32. And so our last four channels are gonna be from our local to be from our RF. And now we are ready to be able to send all of these channels that the Behringer wing is getting to the X32. Now, one thing to note about this setup is that the Behringer wing has the ability of processing 48 mono or stereo channels, whereas the X32 has 32 main channels and then six aux channels that are available to us. So that would bring that total up to 38 mono sources that we can process on the Behringer X32. So you might have to get a little tricky with your routing to be able to make sure that all of your channels make it to either your band or the broadcast situation. But I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I will make for you on either another mixer or a specific thing on any of these mixers, please put that in the comment section down below as I'm always looking through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I also just posted a X32 Fundamentals course that is a full course for the Behringer X32, where I teach my favorite five fundamentals that I believe every audio engineer should know to be able to be excellent at the Behringer X32. So you can find out more about that at drewbrashler.com. But I hope you guys have a great day and thanks so much.